Hello, my name is Ken, and I want to welcome you back to Deep Waters. This podcast is brought to you by Applied Strengths Ministry, where we believe working together in our strengths is the effect of working out the will and calling of God in our lives. The title of this message is Free at Last, and Now What? This is a multi-episode series, and with this is episode 202. So in the last message, we left off at Isaiah 53, 6, 12. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned, every one, to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the inequity of us all. And so we continue with verse 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. Okay, so this theme is now reoccurring, is it not? He was, 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 but he was not yet born. Ha, huh. we will get there. So what of more importance is what Jesus did, not will do, even before he already did it, but already did, before he did. He was silent in our murdering him without a cause. He was silent. He did not speak a reviling word to anyone. 1 Peter 2, 21-25 So in this you have a right to do to him whatever you want. But in doing so, I want you to take a look at his response to your rebellion. Verse 8, he was taken from his prison and from judgment, and who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken, and they made his grave with the wicked. But with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth, he made me do it, you say. I responded in like kind because they started it first. He struck, so I struck. No violence from the one who created all things from a violent, turbulent, whippy whirlwind of chaos. But towards you, for your openly confessing, he is non-existent. He has no violence for you. Verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief when you make his soul an offering for sin. Okay, so now wait a minute. It pleased him to bruise him? And here it is stated again that it already happened. Okay, so you know me, I must confer with DCOM to see what manner of emotion this is. Pleased, used as a polite addition to request, command, etc. If you would be so obligingly, kindly, please come here. Would you please turn off the radio? Verb, used with an object. Pleased, pleasing, to act to the pleasure or satisfaction of. To please the public. To be the pleasure or will of. May it please your majesty. To like, wish, or feel inclined, go where you please, to give pleasure or satisfaction, be agreeable, manners that please. There it is. It pleased himself to do to himself what he did before he was born, for your sake, in the hopes that you would see it, that you would see it, that you would see. So now there is no need going into the probability that it happened before all of this stuff ever happened, but isn't it possible? According to First Peter, it's not only probable, but in fact, it is a fact. First Peter 1.20 He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Okay, so that's for another message if I haven't already done it. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. He's talking about you, isn't he? You, if you come in, are the pleasure of his soul. And he saw and experienced it before you were born. Yep, you are the pleasure of his soul, so much so, that he was able to endure the cross in hopes that you would lose your appetite for the sins of this world and try him on for size. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their inequities. I got to go back to it. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him, to be sin for us. Is he not saying that we become what we do? So if we sin, we become sin? Does it matter if we also remain in sin? Yes, whether we practice unrighteousness or righteousness depends entirely whether we remain in sin or despise it. 
Perhaps now is not a good time to share with you that sin is actually alive and that its desire is for you. Hmm. Well, if you're interested, you can see that in Romans, sin is personified. And in Genesis 4, 7, sin is attributed with having a desire and is sitting at your door waiting. Also, something a dead thing cannot do. Verse 12. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Does this sound like any God ever created a sinful man? Is there anything comparable? Silver or gold statues, wood or pewter idols, who have no hearing or seeing? Nope. We are so sideways as a human race that we cannot create a God that was better than the one that created us. He is matchless, and nothing in all of creation compares to him. There is nothing. Okay, so that scripture by Isaiah was and is intense. No tense unnecessarily attributed to it today or for tomorrow, but for now because it already happened, and yet we still have free will and choice. Okay, so I'm winding down, but not so fast as I think that God is trying to get your attention here. Let's look at what he did for you. Now as you read these, think about how great you and your life is. Go ahead and compare all that you have, and ever think you will have achieved, to what he did for you. Lay it on the table of salvation if you dare. I say this because many think that they will be taking their good items list, or resume to God, and presenting him with some unknown facts about who they are and what they did. Their nice list, even if it wrapped around the entire universe one gazillion times, for all of time, would not gain them access into the kingdom of God. They cannot become sin and sin at the same time. Only perfection could have achieved this, and he is perfection. 1 Peter 2.24 Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Live for righteousness? We have a job to do, and with him we can also shock the world as they did before we could measure shocks. Acts 17.6 So Galatians 3.13 states, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Yep, you did not need a witch to curse you. You open the door for that when you sinned against God. Deuteronomy 28, 15, 68. Colossians 2, 13, 15. So Matthew 8, 17 states that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness. See, it happened just as Isaiah said it would. John 8, 36. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Free from what? If you haven't wrestled with sin after you have been authentically born again, then you know not what I am referring to here. But for those who loathe sin and fall into it after being set free from it, no. Yes, you know. You will spend the rest of your walk with God trying to stay free, while also setting others free at the same time. But with all the revelation that you have received about what Jesus did for you, in that you would have access to Him, For all of eternity, it is motivating enough to know that you have been delivered from living and pursuing sin. Well, that's it for today and the end of this episode. Be free and remain free. Remember, it's not what you find wrong or disagree with regarding these messages, but what you can take away from it. Together, we can do more to impact the kingdom than if we work alone. Let's flip the script and kill, steal, and destroy the works of the enemy and create space for the light of light to shine through into people's lives. Plant a seed and click on the like and subscribe button. Let's build this ministry together. Thanks and see you next time in Deep Water.